Hi, my name is Nidhi Shandel Singh. I'm a consultant gynecologist at Milton Keynes University Hospital, and I am going to show you today a hysterectomy performed with the Versia surgical robot. This is a 360 degree video, and you would be able to scroll around and explore the theater or to watch it with a VR headset. This is the step where we're putting a uterine manipulator um, to help us with manipulating the uterus during surgery. This is a weak air manipulator that we're using. I'm now attaching the instrument to the end of the robotic arm on the patient's right hand side and I will perform what's called the port training um, step. So this is where I have attached the monopolar scissors to the end of the robotic arm. I'm going to introduce it just so that the tip is just visible outside the port and with gentle circular motions around the port I'm going to perform the port training so that the instrument recognizes a fulcrum around which it can move inside the abdominal cavity. I have done a similar step on the left hand side where I have introduced the uh, bipolar grasper, port trained it and this is the first surgical step which is the division of the round ligament so we are coagulating the round ligament on the patient's right hand side uh, and then we are going to start cutting it with the monopolar scissors once it is coagulated. So there you can see the coagulation and the diet heavy settings here are 20, 20 and 10 for coagulation and cutting and here we can also see the theatre setup and you can see the instrument arms at work that are being controlled by the surgeon at the console at the far end and these are the arms and the setup around the patient the scrub nurse here at the end we have auxiliary screens one on the foot end of the patient and one on the left hand side so that they are visible by every member of the team um, Coming back to the surgery here, we have almost finished dividing the round ligament on the right hand side. We're now going to separate the folds of the broad ligament so that we separate the anterior and the posterior folds so that we can then dissect the bladder down on the front and also skeletonize the uterine vessels um, around the lateral edge of the uterus. So here we are carrying on with that process. We are separating the anterior fold of the broad ligament here and we're going to push the bladder down. Uh, this lady has had a previous cesarean section uh, and is having a surgery for endometrial cancer. There are some adhesions on the front near the bladder but we have managed to push it down successfully. Uh, we are now coagulating the uterine vessels on the right hand side and once we are relatively happy that uh, they are coagulated, we're going to start cutting them using the monopodal scissors. And this is where we are cutting the uterine vessels on the right hand side. We will repeat the same procedure shortly on the left hand side as well. Uh, again, to give you an overall view, here is the theatre setup, and there's an assistant at the bottom manipulating the uterus and the robotic arms at play there. This is the left side again, similar sort of steps around ligament being coagulated and then cut. Um, and you can see the ovary right there at the bottom. So we're going to come to the infundibular pelvic ligaments after we've separated our broad ligament uh, into two folds. Um, so again, you can see that separation almost coming out there. Um, and this is now the infundibular pelvic ligament. Uh, as I said, this uh, patient is having a surgery for endometrial cancer and therefore it's imperative we remove the tubes, ovaries, cervix and the uterus. We're trying to stay very close to the ovary here to avoid any damage to any lateral uh, pelvic side wall organs, especially the ureters. We're going to go right by the side of the uterus now. Again, dissect the posterior fold of the broad ligament further so we can isolate and skeletonize the uterine vessels. This is the front of the uterovesical pouch. Some adhesions because this is area section, but we have successfully managed to separate that and we have carefully dissected and pushed the bladder down. So nice clear plane there for us to be able to do our next step, 
which is the colpotomy and cutting around the cervix and there you see this is the colpotomy once we are sure the bladder is nicely down we're going to start cutting around the rim of our we care which is green in color and we should soon see that green um, come into view uh, we are going to coagulate some more vessels here this is the ascending cervical um, on the right hand side and uh, here you can just barely see that green rim come into view on the right hand side uh, and then we're just going to go around in a circle um, and complete the colpotomy again you can see the instruments instrument arms at work there and this is the overall theater view again so the colpotomy we are now approaching the patient's left hand side Again, this is the uterosacral around the left-hand side. We're just going to go around in a circle, join the dots. Just a little bit of tissue left there on the front. That's the colpotomy completed. We will now deliver the cervix and uterus, which has been delivered vaginally. And this is, so I prefer to use intercorporeal um, suturing with number one Vicryl. And I use about three or four interrupted sutures to achieve hemostasis. Um, and you can see the movement of the arms there at the console. The open console design is particularly useful um, so that I can communicate with the rest of my team, the anesthetist. I know what's happening in theater. Um, and of course, for training and teaching, there is a facility to f for people to sit behind you, watch the surgery, uh, and it's excellent from that point of view. I also feel that uh, suturing is made much easier given the wristed instruments compared to um, laparoscopic surgery. Um, and here's uh, the vaginal wall, which has come together quite nicely. I'm just going to do a bit of irrigation there to make sure there's no bleeding. I prefer to deflate the abdominal cavity for about five to six minutes um, and then ensure that the uh, systolic blood pressure is up to at least 100 millimeters of mercury before I close. And here you can see that uh, it's, there's good hemostasis, no active bleeding there. So I'm going to straighten all my instruments and my colleague who's standing by the patient's bedside is then going to remove each instrument on each of the instrument arms under vision. And here he is removing the needle holder on the patient's right hand side coming out there. Uh, and he's now suturing the arm, suturing the skin. And that's the end of the surgery. Thank you very much for watching.